So if you tell yourself the universe is against you, you got to stop lying to yourself. If you tell yourself you were born in sin, a mistake, you're dumb, you're weak, you're without power or abilities, stop lying to yourself. If you tell yourself your DNA is your destiny, really, stop lying to yourself. Dr. David Walker, one of my mentors, wrote in his book, You Are Enough, excuses are deadly, he says. They don't injure our desires, they kill them because they replace them. If you have an excuse as to why you are not demonstrating greater good in your life, that's the reason you haven't. You have an excuse. What's your excuse? Everybody's got an excuse. What lie have you told yourself about yourself? Do you know you are sacred? You are sacred. Do you see yourself as that? Sacred is divine, defined as something that is from the divine. It's an idea or a condition that is both inviolable and sacrosanct. It doesn't go away, it just is. You, my friends, were sacred before you started using this body you're in right now. You're sacred during the time you use this body you're in right now and will continue when you're done using this body you're in right now. You're sacred because every thing is sacred. Not just in a religious sense. I know sacred has a very religious connotation, but in a what a crazy, miraculous thing this universe is since. You know, that energy, that there's this energy and it, it creates all these different things, these beautiful flowers, yourself, all these other selves, your dog, your cat, the trees. It's the essence of you that is divine. The essence of you is sacred. Trees, flowers, birds, sacred. The wind, the stars, the sunlight falling upon our faces, sacred. How our bodies work, how we become us. Remember that out of 200 million sperm, only one gets there where it needs to get, and only one takes the cake, or makes the cake, I guess is more proper. All of this is divine. All of this is miraculous. All of this is sacred. There was a great tweet last week from Gordana Barat, and she said, if we only knew how the universe really works, we wouldn't just believe in miracles. We would expect, respect, and collect them in our hearts a million times a day. Isn't that fabulous? If we only knew how the universe really works, we wouldn't just believe in miracles. We would expect, respect, and collect them in our hearts a million times a day. And she continued with, life is a wonder, love is magic, you are a miracle. Ah. When we see something as sacred, it's no longer taken for granted, right? appreciation and gratitude come into play. When we see something as sacred, you treat it with respect and love, grateful for your connection and communion with he, she, it, them, yourself. It doesn't get tossed in, in an actual or, or a proverbial trash can or, or put just any old place. It's handled with care. You are sacred. And so you no longer feel like it's a burden but a gift when something is sacred. Devotion and love are bestowed upon it and there's no struggle to get through the experience. Like a job. Some people feel their job is, is a struggle to get through every day. There's no joy in that. Without joy, a job needs to go. You're not respecting your sacredness. 
Because when you do, you start to see the goodness and you treat it, them or yourself, better with nutritional food, with sunlight, with laughter, with love, with exercise, with respect, with constructive self-talk, positive energy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You move through and around things that are sacred with awe and wonder, knowing where it comes from, it comes from the divine. And so then we applaud the magical creation the magical creation of that which we are a part of, you are a part of. Dr. Walker said in the chapter, Discovering the Sacred, we can't make ourselves sacred and we can't keep ourselves from being sacred. We can only become aware that we are sacred. Like I said, everything is sacred. And yet, nothing is sacred unless you make it so. You are automatically enough. I, all of us, we are automatically enough, spiritually perfect, whole, and complete right now. Don't have to add, don't have to subtract. You're it. And your superpower, our superpower is choice. Choice to keep or lose what at one time seemed sacred, maybe not intentionally, but it seemed sacred because of the way you used this idea or you practice it as sacred, but now it no longer serves you. So you have the choice, it's your superpower, to have the choice to keep it or get rid of it. That idea, that belief, that thought. Like the following lies. Here's a bunch of lies that we can lose. If I could just X, then my life would be amazing. What's your X? Getting married, getting laid, getting a raise, buying a new car, a new house, a new pet, maybe flossing more often? Is that your X? You're smart enough to know that no one single goal is going to ever solve your happiness delays. Your happiness delays. We delay our own happiness. Nothing happening out here, does it? We do it by our reaction to, our acceptance of, or, or, our, or our non-acceptance of what's going on. Maybe you get this lie. Do you use this lie? I'm a very busy person. That excuse. I'm a very busy person. Well, sorry, I have to call BS on that BS, <laughs> on that belief system. You want to start a business, you want to get six-pack abs or whatever, become an expert at this or that. Don't lie and say you don't have time. You can make the time or understand and accept that you aren't ready yet to commit to that time that it might take. Stop making excuses. Don't lie to yourself. Or what about the, if I say or do such and such, people will think I'm stupid. I know that one. I've had that going through my head before. It's awful. It's awful. It's so, well, it's not feeling sacred about yourself, but it's so, it's just, it's like a big weight, you know. The whole world, the whole universe is on your shoulders for just that moment. It's just so wearing. You know what happens? You know what happens when, when I hear that in my head? What I do? As I remember the title of this, this Terry Cole Whitaker book, What You Think of Me is None of My Business. What you think of me is none of my business. Or maybe you have this lie going on. If you're thinking, if I could just say or do this or that, then he, she, it, they will finally change. Well, that's not impossible, but A, it's not your job to fix them. And two, it usually never works that way because people only change when they are ready to change, not when you want them to. Maybe possibly you've got the everything is great or everything sucks blues. Both are lies. Yeah, I know. I know, what? Both are lies? 
What do you mean both are lies? Everything is great. How can that be a lie? Now, everything, let me explain. Everything doesn't suck. Obviously, everything does not suck. But if you constantly think everything is great, it is very possible you might be hiding behind what they call the spiritual bypass. That no matter what is happening, good or bad, it is the perfect manifestation of your beliefs. Now, wait a minute. Yes, that is true. I teach that probably every week. Your beliefs turn into your manifestations. I think I already said that in the prayer this morning. But though that it is true, it is no reason to let things just happen to or at you. Because what is your superpower? Choice. You have control. You have the ability to choose what comes through your imagination, what feelings you feel, what thoughts you think, and what beliefs you hold on to. And thus, you have control of what manifests around you. So take it. Take that control. Manifest what you want. Then there's the, there's something inherently wrong or different about me, or the, I would change, but and you can fill your rationalization right there, or I can't live without X kind of stuff. And of course, the famous, I know what I'm doing stance. I know what I'm doing. Don't tell me. All of them lie, 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 BS, BS, BS. One, there's nothing inherently wrong with you. You are not your addictions, if you have any. You are not your habits, and we all have them. You are not your DNA or your history. You can and you will be able to live without him, her, they, them, it. And yet, we don't want to get so cocky about our knowledge of anything especially this teaching or any other subject, to the degree that we aren't open to learning more or healing from or evolving to our best. We need to be open, open at the top, as Ernest Holmes said. We need to be able to and, and awaken to new information. There is always new information coming. You may be um, a knowledgeable expert at something, but if you are not open to what's new, to what the divine wants to reveal, you are not taking hold of your sacredness, of your sacred life. See, those head trips that I was just talking about, they're mechanisms, those head trip mechanisms, whether they're projections or denials or other deceptions, they're all escape routes for the lies. They help you escape from your sacredness by using these lies. Now, Sometimes these lies can become your motivation. I totally get that because a divine urge may show up and, um, and may be telling you to be more, live more, express more deeply to transform and transcend your person, your present um, circumstances, education, success. And when that happens, have at it. Use your sacredness, use your superpower to have at it. Take what might have been a lie and use it as motivation to hear the truth, to hear the wisdom for the next adventure. It's okay to want more. It's okay to have more. The lie is that your present circumstances make you less than. When you start with the idea that you're less than, then you are stuck in the lie that you're not sacred. It's not less than that you start with. It's more that you're going to focus on what you're going to and learn to enjoy where you are. Enjoy the challenge or, or of the pursuit of the next adventure. Enjoy that. Relish what might seem like a, a bit of a chase. Relish that and enjoy the journey. Enjoy the learning. Enjoy the evolving, seeing it as a sacred adventure as the divine revealing itself in you, as you, for you. Remember, principle is never bound by precedent. See, we all have a tendency to slip into statistics and probability theories. Even when we think we have clarity about our vision or our purpose, we start to view the vision through the past. And you know, it's okay, learning is good. 
Not repeating mistakes is great. However, don't let such a perspective limit you from stepping into a whole new experience of possibility. Add to your vision work, your imagination feeling action work with a mystical glimpse of the infinite possibilities. These are practical movements that we make supported by this spiritual, even mystical idea. That's what supports it. That's what makes it more magical, more sacred. When we see them, feel them, allow these mystical glimpses of the infinite possibilities of the universe to urge each and every one of us, to urge ourselves into the expression of our next adventure. If it is a destructive thought, I've said this before, if it is a destructive thought, it's a lie. Don't listen to it. If it is a constructive thought, it comes from the universal power and we should awaken to its wisdom and allow it to speak through and as us. You see, to embody the divine, we must stop lying to ourselves about being less than, about being not capable of, and other such nonsense. It's nonsense. You're not less than because you don't know something. That is, at, at, at best or at worst, that is just the divine presence telling you, go learn more. You're not less than, you need to learn more. As Dr. Walker taught, we're not trying to cause something to happen to make us feel like we're enough. Quite the opposite. We're using our enoughness as the foundation upon which we satisfy our own creativity. That quote, that quote in that book is highlighted, arrowed, and starred <laughs> in my copy of the book. So stop the excuses, stop the lies, stop the deceptions, the inaccuracies, and the justifies. Stop resisting with insisting on a falsehood. If you insist on this lie that I have to be or I have to know or I have to this, that, or another, if you insist on that lie, that falsehood, then you are resisting your good. You're even resisting your sacredness. As Florence Scovel Shin wrote in The Game of Life and How to Play It, a great book, resistance is hell, for it places man or woman in a state of torment. A state of torment. My friends, you are enough. Right here, right now, wherever you are, however you are. You always have been enough. You always will be enough. And you are a sacred being living a life right now. Take hold of that. Take hold of your sacredness so you can get cracking on the next adventure. Because my friends, I know, just like me, you've got new adventures to unfold. Have at it. Thank you so much. Namaste.